want to thank Leo for giving up two minutes of his time <laughs> so that I could come up here and <laughs> say a few words about Ellen. Oftentimes, you know, the spouses get uh, forgotten. Well, I want to say a few words to Ellen's contribution to, uh, to Tom's career, as I remember it. I met Ellen uh, when Tom first took over the Marietta operation. And um, since then, we've kept in touch, but mostly through company events. And this has been for the past 14 years, as Leah mentioned, about 15 to be exact. I recall when Leo and I were in Georgia, and at the time, both of us are working in different capacities uh, uh, with, in Marietta. Ellen made a point to orchestrate events, to provide the opportunity for all of us, and I mean the spouses of the leadership team, to meet and to get to know each other better. And she also get the entire leadership team together so that they get to know each other outside the work environment, and I think that's very important. On one hand, we were able to learn more about the business, and that's an attribute that all the spouses can actually take away. And also to understand the stresses and the demands that's being placed on their spouses. At the same time, it was Ellen's way of helping the entire leadership team to really get to know each other as individuals and of the importance of appreciating our lives outside of work. The events Alan organized helped build morale, undoubtedly. I'm a firm believer of that. And further strengthened the teamwork among the leadership group. I can see it and I observe it through some of the company events. And honestly, on a day-to-day -day basis, among my coworkers, I can hear that. Ellen certainly demonstrated the importance of supporting our spouses by having a strong and rewarding family life, where value is not measured by the title, but by who we are as individuals. So therefore, speaking both as a spouse of a member of the leadership team and also an employee of Lockheed Martin, and also on behalf of those who are not here tonight to express their appreciation, we want to thank you, Ellen, for your positive influence. And may you and your family enjoy Tom's retirement. Thank you. And Ellen, uh, you know, all of us, you know, who have spouses or, you know, folks who actually make this work, we all get it. I know in my own personal case, I tell people all the time, this wouldn't work without, without Debbie. So recognizing something for you. Let me take this out. This is, uh, okay, am I going to get this right? Vera Wang? No. Vera Wang, Crystal. <laughs> A lot of her Crystal, excuse me. It's not Vera Wang. Lavender Vera Wang, Waterford Crystal. <laughs> I picked it out. Would you like to say something? Well, thank you so much. This is wonderful, and this tonight has been beyond my. Emergency facts from American Airlines. 
They're very concerned. <laughs> they're, they are very, very concerned. I would sell American, I would suggest. Uh, they did offer to permanently reserve on the 777 seat 3J. <laughs> they said they would just designate it the Tom Burbage seat. Uh, but we told them, no, uh, Tom's, Tom's going to return. So we have a very special gift for you. All right, all three variants of the F-35, that's pretty awesome. That's awesome. Well, first of all, um, you know, I, I've never seen one of those before, so I think that's got to be pretty unique. You know, I've seen F-35, F-22, and other things like that, but I've never seen that, so. Thanks very much for that. That'll have a certainly uh, probably on my dining room table for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> let, uh, let me give a special thanks to Larry for, uh, for hosting such a great evening and for actually being an, an inspiration to me. Um, we go way back before F-35. Uh, I think the last, I think one of the first projects was we were in the Scott Forks working on the uh, missile projects and you know we sort of intersected and intertwined over the years and then he came to F-35 and was really instrumental in getting us on the right path. and, and uh, you know, I don't know of anybody that I've ever worked for that is as good as Larry in terms of running an organization and making it work and do the things it should do. So thank you for that, Larry. I'd also like to thank the planners that did all this tonight, you know, Charlotte and Lori and, and everybody that participated. You know, these things, not, these things are not easy and they're very special. So thanks for that. And a special thanks to the teachers that have been in the back doing the teaching, not the babysitting, but the boys. Um, and especially Kathy White, who is um, tending the little one right now, although I heard she might be sleeping. So, <laughs> but thanks to uh, Kathy White for doing that. Um, and also the uh, the music. I don't know if you heard all the music tonight, but that's actually the music from the wedding that we had a year ago, New Year's Eve. And the playlist was Allison's and, and sort of my favorite songs. And there's some really, really great songs in there. They were kind of a little bit mostly I hadn't heard, but really good stuff. Um, as I was sitting there eating dinner, I was giving this. That, that my grandson's found in the rodeo in Houston. <laughs> I mean, what do you think? Huh? Wood, wood F-35, it looks pretty exact to me, and it's pretty cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah. The, um, I need to tell just a couple of quick stories since I got the podium, and maybe my lifetime to have the podium in front of this group. Um, you see the picture there kind of on the left side of the page, and you saw the magazine cover out there. There's actually a story behind that that some of you may not be aware of. Um, Back before we won the contract, we were trying to motivate our team, you know, our ELT and, uh, at the time. And we, we thought we actually might win this contract, you know, so we better start thinking about what we're going to do if we do. And so I, I happened to be a reader of Fast Company and one of the few people that I knew at the time that actually read it. It had some pretty neat stuff in there. It had some pretty neat job descriptions and stuff like that. So I called Fast Company and I said, would you mind if I took your logo, and I don't want to buy them any copyright rules, but I want to make up a, a mock-up cover of, uh, of Fast Company, and I want to put the JSF proposal art under it, and I want to date it 10 years in the future. I'm going to make up some headlines and put it on there, and I'm going to take it to a management off-site. And so we brought all the team out to, uh, was it Playa something or other down the road on, over by, over in Old Town, Fort Worth, the Mexican place, and we took a, ran out the second floor, we had a big U-shaped table, and we had all the management team there. And we put a big easel up there with this mocked up cover. And we still got the cover somewhere. I don't know where it is, Kathy, somewhere along there. And uh, we had some, you know, some paragraphs or things you might, you know, articles you might read in the magazine. And, uh, and the test question of the night after everybody had a few margaritas and, and all the stuff that goes with margaritas was, um, okay, this magazine came out in 2010, this, we're in 2001. And it's about the F-35, and it's recollecting the proposal of the F-35. What are the articles that are going to be in there? Of course, it's 2013 now. But in 2001, we had no idea what the future would hold. So we said, uh, we kind of went around the room and talked about what are the headlines. And then the second question was, what's, what do you want the magazine to say about you when these articles are written? And it gave people a kind of a concept of trying to focus 10 years out in the future. Well, Fast forward, we actually won the contract and a reporter from the New York Times came down to Fort Worth and she was interviewing me in the Worthington Hotel. She said, what are you doing to get your management team ready? And I said, well, so I replayed what I just told you. And she wrote that in the New York Times article. 
fast forward another day, and uh, the, the president or editor or the owner of uh, Fast Company is writing 